four of the main event is well underway. And four big dogs are still in the hunt. Helmuth, Hanson, Cunningham, and Matisso. If I won the World Series, buddy, I'm off into the sunset. But as the heavyweights defend their turf, several lesser-known pros are ready for a fight. I play with all of them, so intimidation is not going to happen. Hoping this main event launches them into poker stardom. I think this is an absolute defining moment. Who will climb? Who will fall? Who will survive to play another day? I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad, and welcome to the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. I am locked in, boys. Mike Mattiso predicted a big-name pro would win the main event, and right now his prediction looks very promising. Several elite pros still alive, including Phil Helmuth, who will continue to battle with his foil, Adam Levy. I can hardly wait for you, my friend, because you're a million. I'm going to get quick. Many new faces are also beginning to emerge, hoping they can make a run like Havad Khan did a year ago. Players like former chip leader Jeremiah Smith at table two. And over at our feature table, two established pros sit, wondering if this could be their big break. Victor Ramden and Michael Carroll. Ramden, you may recall, donates 25% of his poker earnings to help sick children in his native Guyana. Carol grinds out a poker living by playing in the big cash games at the Commerce Casino in Los Angeles. Hey, my weight loss bet is over. I lost. So How much you wind up losing? How will I end up losing about 16 pounds? I lost 138 pounds the day my third ex-wife walked out. I feel really good now, though, man. See, like, when I was heavy, I couldn't check raise, I couldn't bluff, I couldn't re-steal. I, I know it has everything to do with poker. I can do all these stuff, man. <laughs> well, Mike Mattiso lost, what, 60 pounds? So, according to Victor's theory, the mouth must be the most dangerous player in the room. Victor Ramden on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. Jack Seven of Hearts. Ramden, 40 years old, now lives in the Bronx, New York. After Victor won a WPT title in 2006, he flew 17 kids who needed heart surgery out of Guyana and paid for the medical costs. And he raises the 22000 on Garrett Beckman with Pocket Fox. A 23-year-old won eight main event seats and various satellites. Used one, got paid off for the other seven. Michael Carroll folds. So heads up, Beckman and Ramden. Flop now, ace four, five, a couple of hearts. Beckman with a set of fives, Ramden with a flush draw. I love the smell of an action flop line. Uh-huh. Ramden right into action with 32,000. Yeah, Ramden not shying away from testing Beckman. Beckman from Gardner, Kansas, raises to 75,000. Well, that raise tells Victor he is behind quite a ways. And that call tells Beckman that, hey, I got a little something, something. He does have something, something. Turn card is a heart. He's got a lot of something. Hits the flush to take the lead and adds a straight flush draw. And Victor checks. He's going to try to trap the 23-year-old. Ramden said he's a lean, mean check-raising machine, but doesn't get the opportunity. River card is a seven. Ramden earns the check mark. Ramden. 250. 250,000. Wow. Well, now he's a lean, mean, tricky machine. <laughs> he bets more than the size of the pot. Beckman left with a set of fives that are hard to let go. So Ramden putting heavy pressure on the youngster. Call. And a call. Flush. Call. Totally fooled by Ramden. And Ramden wins a big yes. pot there. Yeah, it's tough to put Ramden on a hand. I can't blame Beckman for calling there. Close the door. Let's gamble all night. This guy's on tilt. And are you going to get that 350 back from me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Victor's full of confidence with lots of chips and less weight. He's ready for his first bracelet. The main event was once the crowning achievement in a big-name pro's career. More recently, though, Norman, it's been the launching pad for unknowns. But perhaps this main event will find a middle ground with its cast of accomplished yet lesser-known pros. Indeed, players like Victor Ramden, Michael Carroll, and Chino Ream have been impressive and seem ripe for a breakout main event. But I was born a front-runner and will die a front-runner, so i got to go with the four horsemen. Helmuth, Mattiso, Cunningham, Hansen. Until all those guys are gone, I'm driving the big-name bandwagon.
And those four horsemen are among the 288 players left here on day four. Let's catch up with Mike Matisseau, seeking his third main event final table. Mike right now sitting at a table with Cornell Pizarra. These two, you might recall, jousted at the featured table on day one. Also here is Mike's good friend, Thomas Thunder Keller. He's had a significant weight loss since his bracelet win in 2004, but Matisseau hooked up in a hand right now with former chip leader Sigurd Eskelin. Mike leads with King Queen, Eskelin with King 10, 3 eighths oh, on the flop. You can't call me here. You can't possibly call me here. Oh, he called you, Mike. You're lucky he didn't I mean, raise you. If this hand wasn't the best hand, I wouldn't believe it. Turn card now is a jack. Jack. Madison's queen kicker still plays. They both check. Madison with the check mark. The madman might fire. Check. They both check. The river bet might have won that one. Just the king. Madison with a better king. And he'll take the pot. Send the cheese over here. <laughs> you got, you're a sick pup, man. <laughs> You're all sick. <laughs> and just a school teacher from Norway. There's the sickest right there. Mattiso pointing to Gus Hansen. Gus's reputation precedes him. <laughs> Gus dueling right now with Danny Mitnick. Mitnick is all in and trailing after the turn. Hansen's queen kicker gives him the advantage, both though with straight draws. Mitnick needs an ace, king, queen, jack, or seven to survive. River card is a 10. Mitnick pairs his 10, but Hansen wins it with a straight. Yeah, he's got a straight. Mitnick sees the straight and knows he's been eliminated from the main event. And Gus Hansen with his second consecutive deep run at the main event. Gus's only cash is at the World Series come in $10,000 events. He has expensive taste. At another table, Phil Helmuth is the only main event champion still in action, and he's still sitting with online phenom Adam Ruthless Levy. Levy, a victim of oh, Phil Rant earlier on day four. Phil on a hand pre-flop right now with Finnish pro Santeri Valikoski. The flop is five ace deuce. Valikoski has a pair of fives to lead. Helmuth with a nut flush draw. Valikoski checks. Now Phil. This is a bluff. That's 15,000. It is a semi-bluff, so Phil is semi-truthful. Velikovsky comes along with the call. Velikovsky likes to play floorball, whatever that is. Another ace on the turn. Velikovsky still with the best hand. And now he bets 25,000 with aces up. How have you found the flush draw? I raise. Raise now. And he raises to 55,000. Phil is representing the ace or a big pocket pair. And Valakowski calls. Must have a read on Phil. Valakowski is representing no fear. River card is a six. Valakowski earns the check mark. And he checks. Phil checks. Valakowski wins. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Uh-oh. Phil's up. Oh, and rolling. 5-7. Idiot from Northern Europe. Idiot from Northern Europe, Phil. Call the race with 5-7. That was the idiot from Northern Europe versus the Renaissance man from Western America. <laughs> Freaking idiots. God, they play so bad. Phil did all he could to get the fin off his hand, but those Northern Europeans are stubborn people. Hello, Mr. Cunningham. Alan? Big pot out there, buddy. Come on. Don't be scared. <laughs> I call. Only a donkey would make that call. We play at fulltillpoker.com. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light Main Event. Back at the Rio, Phil Helmuth still hasn't gotten over that last hand. And you know, Norman, he may never get over it. What is going on here? I mean, I just can't believe this. God, I mean, do I ever catch a break? I got a guy calling a race with 5-7 out of position. He flops middle pair against two pair and over flush draw. Freaking idiot from Northern Europe trying, waiting to give me all his money. Personally, I think idiots from Southern Europe are more idiotic. What were you hoping? That I had the, the nut flush draw, huh? That's what you're hoping for, huh? Fills out a line again, Lon. His great play does not excuse his boorish behavior. He's got to stop berating other players. So Phil continues to stew at the outer table. Chip average in the room right now, just over half a million. I'm really not this tight, I swear. Golly, I'm card dead. I'm officially card dead. There's only one wine in poker. That's Phil Helmut. Shouldn't be anybody else, right? I don't want 
don't don't put me in that category, Vic. Come on, man. Don't do me like that. I thought we'd go way back. A deeper cut there may not be in this poker culture. All right, action on Michael Carroll. And Scared. officially card dead no more. Pocket Kings. Now what's the expression? The squeaky wheel gets the grease? Yeah. It works. And a raise to 22,000. See, guys like Victor are never card dead because they'll play any two cards. Victor with ace queen off in the small blind. And he will call for the 18,000 more. Big blind fold, so Ramden and Carroll heads up. Carroll with the pocket kings ahead, but no longer an ace in there. Ramden takes the lead. Carroll officially card dead again. Well, Victor was playing good cards this time, and he outflopped Michael Carroll. Victor checks. Carroll now, who's been basking in his table mate's limelight, played next to Jerry Yang and Phil Locke earlier. He bets 36,000. Carroll's going to presume Ramden doesn't have an ace. Ramden calls. Turn card, four of clubs, no help to Michael Carroll. Victor checks again. Well, if Carroll presumed Victor didn't have an ace before, he's going to presume the same thing right now. Indeed. The bet is 80000 for Michael Carroll. What you got left, Michael? I started to hand with, like, almost six. Michael can't like that question. <laughs> Victor, though, just calls. No raise. River card now. Is another ace trips for Ramden. He's got the check mark. And Ramden checks again. That's real sneaky. He check called every step of the way and, and maybe hoping Carroll bets again here. Carroll not so sure now. He checks back. Check. He cries uncle. Nice read by Carroll. Ramden shows a winning hand. Michael's pocket kings into the muck. Useless. Good hand, Vic. Shoe gum. Flop an ace. Rake in a pot. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Still three out of me, huh, Vic? Listen, you gotta get lucky to win tournaments, brother. As good as you play, you gotta, you gotta get lucky. Yeah. No luck for Michael that time, but Poker Insiders acknowledge his skill, and after several years in the poker wings, he's ready for his own spotlight. My name is Michael Carroll. I am the best player that nobody knows, but the players know me. But I'm still calling. You can ask Phil Lack, Kid, Kenny Trent, any of them. When Michael Carroll's a game, nobody's rushing to get to the game. I just know what I'm doing. I busted three people in C1 yesterday in the hot seat. For some reason, the poker guys like me. I get big hands, I flop big hands. As long as I don't play against myself, then I'm okay. Don't do nothing stupid. It bothers me sometimes not to get recognized, but it's not bad to be Michael Carroll right now, though. To get to the final nine and get to do this for four more months, that's a dream scenario. I don't care who I gotta go through. If I sit down and I see Bill Helmet to my left, Alan Cunningham to my right, and Mike Mattis on the other side of the table, it's still poker. That's what I'm looking forward to. It's always a dream, but it's one step at a time. That's me, one step at a time. Michael's cashed in a No Limit Hold'em event in all four years. He's played at the World Series, including a final table in 2005. I don't worry about what people play. It's, it's irrelevant. If my chips is in, you're in trouble. It's a guarantee. All right, let's go to table two now, where a big hand is brewing between three promising young players, including Jeremiah Smith, the former poker blogger who began this day second at chips, and John Turner, who made a final table at last year's World Series, and Albert Kim, a former law student from Staten Island, New York, the forgotten borough. Pre-flop, Kim leads with pocket tens. Now the flop, and Kim now leads big time with a set of tens. Jeremiah Smith got a pair of sixes, but he's almost drawing dead. Turner didn't catch much in that flop, and he checks. Kim, with those three tens, bets 35000 There he is. And Smith is going to raise with his measly pair of sixes. Makes it 135000 You see the 1% next to Smith's name. Well, Turner got out, so now Smith has a 3% chance of winning the hand. And if Lightning strikes down Albert Kim at this table right now, Harris. Smith will have a 100% chance of winning this hand. That's probably the only way. 160 more. Kim with a raise of 160 more. So you're committed, eh? Yes. I'm committed with him. Smith just with a pair of sixes. And his day just got a little worse. 
Kim could have flat called, but he decided to end matters right there and then. The set of tens wins that nice pot for Albert Kim, and Jeremiah Smith looking a little peaked after having the chip lead earlier in this tournament. Sitting next to Albert here at table two is Lisa Parsons. Lisa, one of ten remaining women in the field. Others include Van Nguyen, wife of Men the Master Win, who was eliminated from the main event on day three, but lending his support here. Van right now is all in and needs some help on the river, but she does not get it, and she has been knocked out. The master not happy with the missus. Have to wait till next year for that family. Oh. And that's Kara Scott. Short stack, but still working it. She is the host of European TV poker shows. What can I do? Ooh. Kara. 310 3 Stop it. Stop it. Nearby another woman who was also a poker reporter, Tiffany Michelle, going up against the bulldozer, Havad Khan. Khan pushed all in. Tiffany called him. The flop put Havad in a deep hole as Michelle paired her queen. Havad in bad shape here. Tiffany with top pair, and she has the better heart draw. And now the turn card with Havad all in. And now he's down to his last card. Havad Khan is going to net nine and a nine only, or he is out of here. And the river card is a five. Tiffany Michelle wins the hand. Havad Khan is gone. But Tiffany's still here. Do you know how to spell her name? I'll get it later. <laughs> Avad was the last player remaining from last year's main event final table, and he'll go as he came this year very quietly. Avad, a great run last year, finishing sixth. A pretty good run this year. So a muffler put on the bulldozer by Tiffany Michelle, who now has a very serious chip stack. Welcome back to the Rio, where the field continues to shrink over to Phil Helmuth's table, where Evelyn Ng has just been eliminated. She already has my phone number. <laughs> Curiously, has never called it. This ends what was her best run in the main event, finishing 238. Now just eight women remaining, but Helmuth's still here, being visited by Chow Zhang. I mean, they must, oh have my. Me, they must have beat me 23 out of 25. I don't even know how many pots, but it's my turn now. 23 out of 25, though? It's okay, Phil. You're the world champion. It's my turn, baby. You're the world champion. Well, it's my turn, baby. Hey, you're not, you're not lucky. You're the best in the world. Right? Like they didn't Chow, of course, was eliminated on day three, but he's here today to spread some joy, even to Phil. A player who needs no consoling is our current chip leader, 23-year-old Jeremy Joseph. He began the day with a chip lead and continues to hold that top spot. Right there, he picks up a pot from Christian Dragomir, and Joseph's big stack gets a little bigger. Joseph was among the early chip leaders at last year's main event. Says he ran into Carlos Mortensen and barely cashed. This year looks to be different. There's 06 bracelet winner Mark Foss, another player making a big run this year. Anyone with a stack this big who denies that they're running hot, clearly lying. I believe that Mark Foss is uh, clearly running hot. He is indeed. And right now, another young bracelet winner, Brandon Cantu, standing up, trying to win a big pot from Jens Klanning. Cantu re-raised enough to put Klanning all in. And Klanning oh, will fall. Oh, boy. Mike, check this bluff out. And Brandon shows a bluff wow. for most of his chips. Wow. Got to just shove it in there. You Man. Man. Wow. Camp 2, like Mike Matisso, sometimes is fatally attracted to the big bluff. Oh, wow. Brandon stole over 400,000 chips from his Danish neighbor right there. I might make a run at this thing now. I might make a run. All right, let's take a look at the E-Trade Financial chip count. Here are the top five chip stacks in the room. Jeremy Joseph on top of everyone. And there you see how some notable players are stacking up. Cunningham over a million chips. Helmuth just hanging on. Back now to our featured table. Victor Ramden right up there with the chip leaders. Has built a very good stack for himself. Action, though, on Reggie Lyons. 24-year-old Irishman. Looks down at ace-10 offsuit. Lyons attended Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, I believe they are the Demon Deacons. Them too. Amazing. Lyons raises to 22,000. Victor Ramden now with pocket eights. Victor drove a taxi in Guyana before coming to the U.S. in 1989, and then he was a pool hustler for a while. Ramden calls for 22,000. Michael Carroll still card dead. Officially. So Ramden and Lyons to the flop. The flop is four. King eight. A set of eights for Ramden. He's got a chokehold on this hand. Lyons with ace high. That's 35,000. Boy, Victor's got to love that. The, the other fella doing his bidding for him. And there's a smooth call from Ramden. Turn card now is a 10. That pairs Lyons, but Ramden with the check mark. Lyons now checks. 
Lions bet with nothing, and now he checks when he hits a pair. Ramden with a big bet, 80,000. Well, again, Ramden's pretty active in pots. I think he's tough to put on a hand. Lions makes the call. Lions calls drawn dead. Perfect card, six of hearts. Ramden, of course, with the three eights, has the check mark. Lions checks again. Thinks better of it again. Ramden has been quite aggressive today. 225. And makes another big river bet. Victor bets a little more than two thirds of the pot. Lions with a pair of tens. And he folds them. The 24 year old got away from it fairly cheaply. Another pot for Ramden. Show a bluff. Yes. A hundred each. Boy, that's <laughs> consumer fraud. There was no bluff. Yeah, Victor pretty much had that hand one after the flop. My first bluff of the day, folks. <laughs> Doesn't look like Michael Carroll's buying it. Perhaps he realizes Victor's real bluff came after the hand. the Rio, you know a main event victory is a life-changing event, and not just for the accountants and social workers who win, but also for the workaday pros who make their living at the tables, like Michael Carroll. He's in a hand right now post-flop, holding a flush draw against Tommy Lee, who leads with a pair of fives. 215,000 in the pot. Turn card is at 10. Lee still has the best hand with the fives. He checks. Carroll picked up a straight draw. Michael checks out the board and, and runs through his options in his head. Should I bluff at it? Should I take a free card? Should I wear a hockey jersey the next time I play? <laughs> His choice? It looks like to bluff at it. That's 120000 Tommy Lee just with a pair of fives. He's the brother of poker pro Nam Lee. Facing a bet of 120000 from Carroll. Lee with a small pair out of position. You got me laid on top pair, buddy. Good job. And he says, I'm laying down top pair. Ace Jack, right? Carroll wins it. Better. Then Ace Jack. Let's see if he beat. Lee didn't have top pair, and Carroll didn't have Ace Jack. The flush draw? Victor would bet that flush draw. I don't even know. I met a flush in a hundred years. Just don't put me in your category, please. What are you talking about? We're boys for I life. Right? Aces, kings, queens, and jacks. You never saw them. You don't get them kind of hands. I don't play those fancy hands you guys play. <laughs> it's a good thing you cannot commit. Perjury at a poker table. <laughs> Some good poker there, but not a lot of honesty at the featured table. Let's go over to table two. We find former chip leader Jeremiah Smith. He just called a pre-flop raise with pocket trays. Tino Lekic has Smith crushed with pocket kings. 135,000 in the pot already. The flop is deuce four seven. Lekic and his kings still way ahead. Lekic good friends with David Saab, who's currently second in chips. Jeremiah Smith now. That's enough to put Lekic all in. And a call. Jeremiah Smith got reckless again. Not a good read there. Lekic in good position to double up. Yeah, I thought you were making the move. I was wrong. Jeremiah in trouble. I got outs. Not a lot of outs. He wants to see baby cards. Turn card now is a nine. Lekic still good. A three bowl me. A three and a three only. Knocks out Lekic. River card is a 10, and Lekic will double up. Nice hand, sir. Thank you. Yet another bad read by me. And Jeremiah Smith must yet again ship more chips across the table. Stupid. I'm stupid. stupid. Jeremiah kicking himself as his once large chip stack continues to shrink. Another player having some serious chip stack issues is Phil Helmuth. I'm going to buy Phil a slinky. I think it might calm him. <laughs> At another table, top pro Mike Mattiso with a below average chip stack and a hand with friend Thomas Keller, who called Mike's pre flop re raise, 114,000 in the pot. Now the flop. Flop is eight, tray nine. Keller checks it over to Mike. All in. Mike moves all in. His final 271,000 chips at risk. To win the main event, you've got to survive so many moments like these. Rather than risk his tournament, the mouth probably would prefer if Keller just folded. He's not going anywhere. Keller makes the call to put Mattiso at risk. Mattiso turns over pocket aces. Keller pocket tens. 
Well, the mouth likes the call now. If he can survive, he is at risk, but way ahead. Tell me, baby. Come on. All right, now the turn card with Mattiso all in. Mattiso still good. Mattiso in great position. Keller would need a 10 to knock out the mouth. And the river card is a deuce. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That is exactly what he's talking about, Lon. Mattiso doubles up through his buddy, Thomas Keller. Uh, the mouth has been playing some great poker. I really thought you had queen. He always brings his A game to the big one, trying to make a final table at the main event for a third time. <laughs> the only thing I hate about it, I have to do it to one of my very good friends. He's now flush with chips, and now it's Keller who needs to double up. What's the difference? If I won the tournament, you know I'd be there for you. A do-or-die moment for Mattiso results in a big pot for the mouth, seeking to make more noise in this main event. Thank you. This Poker Fact is brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. The top five pocket hands with the best chance of winning are aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and jacks. If you catch these, lucky. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, Main Event. Back in the Rio Poker Room on November 11th, you can see that main event bracelet come off its pedestal and be awarded to our new champion. I always chat, brother. Chips make me happy. Chocolate chip cookies make me happy. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Victor Randon looks down at Ace Queen of Clubs. He watched friends play poker in a bar in the Bronx in 2002, and, and that's how he got started. Randon raised it to 26000 on Andy Wittick, 54-year-old software engineer from Nevada City, California, Ace Nine of Spades. He started playing uh, Hold'em in a local club five years ago. A call from the small blind, Aditya Agarwal, known online as Intervention, a very active player, King Queen from the big blind. I don't believe I've ever met him, but it's hard to tell. I think he's under there. <laughs> he makes the call for 18,000. The flop, queen, tray, four, Ramden with top pair, top kicker. Augerwald, top pair, inferior kicker. Let's see, if you're charitable, good things should happen to you. Wittick missed the flop, and he checks. Augerwald checked. Ramden bets 55,000. Wittick folds. I think I do know him. He, he was either my first mortgage lender or he officiated my second wedding. <laughs> no wonder he's under the hood. <laughs> Augerwald calls for 55,000. A tray on the turn. Two pair for each. Ramden still leads with that kicker. Augerwald checks. Ramden does so too. Victor decides to take a breather. River card now is a king, and that pairs Augerwall. He steals the lead from Randon, gets the check mark. Man, I already marked a W next to Victor's name in my book. Augerwall checks. Randon's been active on the river. 100,000. A quick call. Ace Queen. Ace Queen will come up second best. Well, Augerwall gets lucky on Randon. Victor lost about 180,000 there. Yeah, Victor gets chatty when he has chips, but like most of us, gets a bit quiet after a loss. With 218 players in the room, the chip average is 628,000. One player well over that chip average is Chino Ream. He's in a hand right now with Ida Von Didacom, who just put out a bet to Chino after a king on the turn. A king was a real good card for you, unless you already had me beat. I'm trying to put you on a hand that I could beat, like ace-queen. Yeah, I can't put them on a hand either. You wouldn't do that with Ace Queen. Because they're not showing me his whole cards. Without that pocket cam line, I'm unbelievably stupid. <laughs> he wins. Tino's going to fold. And Von Dynacom will win the hand and show the Ace Jack. Touche, my friend. Touche. These idiots from Northern Europe keep winning with bad cards. <laughs> I was right. You're right. Spot on. Yeah, Chino Ream got blocked and missed an opportunity right there, but his chip stack is still in very good shape. Meanwhile, Phil Helmuth's chip stack not in very good shape right now. They come from all over the world just to mess with you, huh? Gus, I can't, uh, buddy, I can take it. Gus Hansen checking in yeah. on Phil. I played absolutely extraordinary poker. It's amazing I'm still alive. I've heard the rumors. It's been <laughs> great watching you. The rumors reach your table? You have no idea, Gus. If you had the cards I had, you would have been out an hour ago. Hour 15. Maybe. Gus passing time at the sideshow that is Phil Helmuth. Anson, of course, one of the top players and is known as the Great Dane. Phil Helmuth has his own somewhat less flattering nickname. And while we've explored the long list of poker nicknames before, in this edition of The Nuts, we delve into their curious origins. The problem with poker is that you spend a lot of time with the same people. So they're not just going to sit there and call you Eric or Chuck or whatever the heck your name is. Or they're going to find something funny to call you. They call me C4. Evelyn Champagne Ng. They call me Lady Maverick. 
You know, Daniel Negreanu is in his 30s now, but he's still kid poker. When I started playing poker back in the day, boy, I was one of the few young guys playing poker, and they just called me kid. So it was kid this, kid that, and it just stuck. What's up? Jesus. He looks like Jesus, for crying out loud. So you take off the cowboy hat, and uh, I guess I look like the guy. <laughs> People call me a lot of things, like from idiot to moron to fool. Yeah, that's not cool. But nothing has ever stuck. I'm not giving up. Kitty games down the street. Mike the Mouth Madison. Now that's a fitting nickname. Philly, 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 Philly. They used to call me Loudmouth. Nuts! I just said, well, Mike the Mouth. Sounds cool. All right, we can go with that. Self-given nicknames, null and void. Absolutely not. You cannot coin yourself a nickname. And I mean, it's close. It's a little iffy with Phil. Are you kidding me? Helmuth is a poker brat. It's just sick. The guy can't even spell poker. All right. I mean... Could be poker. Oh, people always refer to me as poker brat. I thought it was fitting. I guess it still is, sadly. He's not that bratty, is he? <laughs> the best I can do is like this. Oh, that's right, he is. Phil originally raised this action, what was re raised by Adam Levy, aka Ruthless, and Phil calls that re raise. And these two will tangle once again as we go to the flop. Honey, this could be it, huh? I'll warp the rubber suit. The flop is queen, king, five. Levy, first to act. That's 75,000. It's unbelievable. I, mean, I just can't. It's like a nightmare. So what is this? This guy went crazy with two nines. He's drawn dead. But he bet 75,000 anyway. I'm going to let him win this one, too, I guess. By this point, Adam Levy, I believe, could sue Phil for... Mental duress? Not much justice here, you know what I mean? There really hasn't been much justice today, you know what I mean? I know, like, I think you probably went crazy with eights or nines, right? Or ace, jack, or something. Phil folds pocket jacks. But I mean, if you're gonna go crazy, you can get punished one time, you know? I mean, it's not even fair. Once again, you'd be out. I had you gone all in there, three. You had ace, king, and hit a king? What I can't believe is this is the World Series of Poker, and you all play so bad, it sucks. <laughs> it's like I'm being tested. I passed the test. Don't pray with your mouth full. Please, at least let me break even. At least one of these idiots can move it in me and I can bust them soon. I've waited like 25 times. Patience is a virtue. Please. Back at the Rio, right to table two. Jeremiah Smith has seen his chip stack come back to earth from 1.1 million down to 700,000 now. He's taken this hand off as Albert Kim and John Turner go heads up. Turner flopped a set of aces. Kim has a flush draw with a pair of eights. Turner put out a bet of 41,000. A battle of 26 year old poker pros. I raise. And Kim says, I'm going to raise it up. He's raising on the draw with bottom pair. 140. Makes it 140,000 more. Turner with a set of aces. I'm all in. Moves all in. Oh, this is gross. That was an easy all in for John Turner. This is not an easy call for Albert Kim. But it does appear Kim's getting the right price to call here. He'd have to put in 336,000 more to win a pot of nearly 800,000. <laughs> and he doesn't like it, but he makes the call. And Turner at risk, but ahead with those three aces. You want to chop the pot? Chop the pot? I thought he had ace king when he was talking about ace ten. Ace ten or eights or... Well, Turner not happy with Kim's hand, but John's still in good shape here. Turn card now. Is a hard, and Kim hits the flush. Turner's not done, though. Don't worry, I haven't won one of these out tournament. You're going to win. No worry. John Turner now pushed to the brink. He needs the board to pair, or he is wamboozled. River cards, a four of hearts, and that's going to do it. Kim oh, takes that sick. pot and knocks off John Turner. John Turner with a quick exit. What am I doing? I'm so stupid. Oh, you're crazy. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, and I did it. Oh, my God, I'm such a donk. It's awesome. But a donk with over 1.4 million chips. A look at the E-Trade Financial chip count, and you see the top five led by Jeremy Joseph Still with 2.7 million chips and other notable players, Can Two, Hanson, and Cunningham, all very strong. Meanwhile, Jeff Madsen, nowhere near the leaderboard right now, trying to decide whether or not to call all in against Ross Smith. Smith bet 75,000 on the turn, and Madsen called. Now Smith has bet to put Madsen all in for his final 117,000 chips. Madsen weighing the options. 
call. And he calls. Ross Smith shows pocket aces. Madsen turns over Trip Jacks to double up. So Madsen had paired up on the flop and tripped up on the turn to stay alive. Yeah, it's I'm good sorry. to be young and blessed. <laughs> I can breathe. You might have been sweating the three diamonds on the board. Now, slightly over 400,000 chips. Over to Mike Matisseau's table. He's in a hand with his buddy Thomas Keller and old nemesis Cornell Pizarra. Eight deuce deuce on the board after the flop. Action on Keller. He's going to bet it. 50,000. Mouth folds. Pizarra's dream is to open a poker room in his native Romania. I'm all in. And he has just raised Keller all in. For his tournament life, Keller will make the call. So Keller at risk. He shows nines, but Pizarro with aces. And Keller's tournament life could be over in a hurry. Turn card to come now. And it's a nine. Keller with a set. <laughs> oh, wow. Pizarro now would need an ace to send Keller home. The river card now is a queen, and Keller's going to hang on to double up. Wow. We're dead. Keller first <laughs> ran into Mattisau's pocket aces. Now he cracks Pizarra's pocket aces. So with that double up, Thomas Keller's chip stack just got a whole lot healthier. Getting himself physically healthy was the motivation for a big change in Keller's life. When I sit down at a poker table, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes until somebody at the table looks at me and they say I look familiar. They ask if they've played with me before. Are you Thomas Keller? Yes, I'm Thomas Keller. Thank you. I've definitely changed a lot since 2004. Yes! I had gastric bypass surgery. I've lost over 200 pounds. That's what I'm talking about! The decision to uh, do the gastric bypass, it definitely wasn't a, a vanity thing. I was 24 and my doctor told me I'd be diabetic in a year. I wanted to uh, live to be a uh, you know, cranky old man, so I figured I'd better do something about my weight. The nickname Thunder, I would associate it more with the old self than the new self. I feel great. I feel really fortunate to still be in this tournament. You never think I have a hand, do you? I mean, what else can you ask for as a poker player? That's totally cool. It certainly feels like there's some kind of force that wants me to be here. Keller also credits the birth of his first child as motivating him to lose weight and live a healthier lifestyle, if you can call playing poker for a living a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> Good point. All right, back now to our featured table. And action is on Reggie Lyons. First World Series cash here. Amount to be determined. Pocket trays. Lyons plans to move to Argentina to learn Spanish. Heck, you can do that by just moving to L.A. <laughs> he raises the 22000 to Victor Ramden. Ramden with Ace King. Victor's ultimate dream, by the way, is to build an orphanage in Guyana. He's already acquired the land. A re-raise to 62,000. Michael Carroll, the big blind, still card dead. Card dead is card dead. Action back to Lions now, and he'll make the call for 40,000 more and go heads up with Victor Ramden again. Flop is queen four, ace. Ramden pairs his ace. A huge advantage. Lions and Ramden both check. Turn card, another queen. Rampant still way ahead. Lions reaching for chips. Rampant's got to be worried Lions might have a queen. He'll represent something here. Bet 65,000. Rampant with a quick call. Victor's interesting. Sometimes he'll sit on a big hand, and sometimes he'll bet with nothing. Ten of diamonds on the river. Rampant gets the check mark with a better two pair. Lions measuring out 160,000 now. Lions is going to try and steal it. How do they say in Spanish? Eso es una mala idea. What does that mean? I call. Pocket threes don't feed the bulldog. <laughs> Ramden calls. And Ramden will win. Ay caramba. Undeterred by Lions bets on the turn and river, Ramden made the right call, and that is the planner's good instinct moment. Thank you. A key win for Ramden. <laughs> Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. You look great. You look great. You look great. How do I look? Ooh, Bad poker.
poker face. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. That's your flowers. That's your flowers. Back to the Rio. Competitors continue to drop off. We're down to 194 players now, including one past world champion. 19 out of 20 pots I raised, they re-raised me and beat me. But I know what's going to happen, so I just patiently wait. No one survives this stuff except me. And all of a sudden it's going to go bam, bam, bam. They're just going to give me all the chips for no reason. It's so sick. It doesn't even make sense. It's like they have no pride, no patience. I'm steaming right now. I can't even see straight. I can't believe we left Phil in mid-wine. <laughs> Back to the featured table. The blinds are at 5 and 10,000 now. 1,000 chip ante from each player. Carol with 7-5. Still officially card dead. <laughs> Reggie Lyons now. Pocket Kings. Lyons played in the 06 main event. Was here for a cup of coffee. Out very quickly. The raise to 27,000 with the two kings. Victor Ramden now. In the small blind. Pocket deuces. Victor finished 29th in the 03 main event, his first World Series ever. He made a move on Men the Master, got caught, and was done. Victor called, and so he'll go heads up again with Reggie Lyons. The flop, ace, ace, jack. Lyons, pocket kings keep him in the lead. Victor checks. Reggie Lyons checks behind him. Turn card, another jack. Lions still way ahead. Check. It's a weird board for Lions. Any ace, any jack now, and he's beat. Lions checks as well. River card is a tray. Lions with aces and kings has the check mark. Ramden can only play the board. He checks. Of course, Lions can beat the board. Now, Lions seems a bit wary of Victor, but he looks like he finally thinks he's good. And no checking for Lions. He bets 45,000. Yep. Now to Victor Ramden. Race. And Ramden comes Here's back. Here's Victor. Over the top. A raise to 110,000. It's not that big of a raise. And if I'm the kid, I'm confused. Did Victor slow play an ace? Did Victor hit a flush? Is this just a value bet? Lions need 65,000 to call. Call. And he does. Good call. Good call. Yeah, good call. And score one for the uh, young Irish lad in the sunglasses who wants to learn Spanish. Yeah, Lions gets some revenge and gets back about half of what he shipped to Victor a short time ago. Reggie, you need to relax, man. You know, I thought we had this conversation earlier. I think Michael Carroll would make an excellent cruise ship director. I'm trying to play good. Despite that hand, Victor is playing very good right now. Back to the outer tables, and we pick up action with Chino Ream getting busy once again. He's in a hand with Steve Bilarakis, the youngest man to ever win a World Series bracelet. Bilarakis all in with pocket eights, trailing Chino's two queens. Turn card now. Bilarakis with a straight draw, Ream with a flush draw. Bilarakis needs a non-spade eight or ten, or he's done. River card is a deuce of clubs, and Bilarakis has been eliminated from the 2008 main event. Bilarakis won't be the youngest ever to win the main event. Phil Helmuth still has that title, but Bilarakis still young enough that he could do it next year. Bilarakis knocked off by Chino Ream. Chino over 1.8 million chips now. He made the mix Hold'em final table earlier in this World Series. Elsewhere, Mike Mattiso has a new VIP at his table, none other than Gus Hansen. Hansen sitting in the big blind right now, and Mattiso has just raised Gus's blind. I get 30 seconds and I call floor man. We ain't gonna go through all the every hand. I forgot to say that when you sat down. Clock on uh, wherever we're at. Gus re-raises. Are you calling on yourself, Mike? I just wanted to see what was going to happen here <laughs> if I raise his blind, because he knows that only the sickest human in the world would raise his blind. Okay? Because he knows I have to have like a hand this big. Let's see how big it is. So I guess we're going to have to play a no pot. <laughs> <laughs> Not big enough. That's a big hand. Dang. Nice floor show, though. <laughs> well, one guy talked, <laughs> the other guy took the chips. How can't you like the other guy? <laughs> Back over to Phil Helmuth now in a hand after the turn with Sarkis Akopian, who just raised enough to put Phil all in. Helmuth now. We'll make the call. Call on Blue 13. Helmuth will be at risk. Got an overpair? 
Akopian with a pair of tens. Helmuth with trip fives. Remember Akopian knocked out Jean de Berbalant earlier in the day on the river. No ten, and I have five hundred thousand. I'm twenty to one favorite for about five hundred, huh? I know you are, Putin. One card to come. Helmuth all in. Akopian <laughs> would need a ten to end Phil Helmuth's main event and ignite the world's largest volcano. River card is a queen, and Helmuth will double up. And we are spared more verbal carnage. Yeah, and Akopian gives new life to the 89 main event champ. For me, I've got the action I want, I've got the table I want, I've got the image I want. It's the greatest sport in the world. Jordan? Count it! That was a layup double up for Phil Helmuth, who has a lot of game left in him. Day four is now complete. It was a session that proved glorious for some, yeah, yeah. treacherous for others. Oh my. Now just 189 players remain, less than 3% of the original field. Among those who did survive are new faces. You guys don't know we like to gamble? Established pros. You might make a run at this thing now. And four of the biggest names in the game. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Everyone is now one giant step closer to becoming our next main event champion. For Norman Chan, I'm Lon McCarran. See you next time from the World Series of Poker.